there was a time when I was regarded as a communist. Um, there was a time when my mother asked me to write under a pseudonym because I was a disgrace to the family. Um, and I say once again, you know, it's not about who's in power, it's about what they do and how they behave. Um, and it's not about whether they, they're black or white. It, the, the question about who's the most corrupt, the present government or the, or the apartheid government, um, I don't think we even have to discuss the apartheid government because it was simply, simply evil. Um, but I think if we, if we don't check the current government, and if it wasn't for the fact that we have such a magnificent constitution that protects all of us, heaven knows in which direction we will go. Am I correct in saying, Jacques, that if they charge you for contravening the Intelligence Services Act, that's good news. That means the people that are buying these books can believe what is in here. Well, I can't, I can't see how they can charge me for publishing false information because then I haven't that's broken the law. Exactly. The same goes for SARS, who says, um, I've contravened, I've contravened um, the Tax Administration Act by publishing um, taxpayers' information. Well, I've, if, I, if I haven't published the true information of a taxpayer, it cannot be, it cannot it be cannot a crime. It cannot be a crime, yes. So anyway, we're waiting, for, um, we're waiting for SARS to come with their criminal charges. The tax affairs of the president should be public knowledge. We need to know whether the president pays his taxes. Now, if, if, if Jacob Zuma's only income has been his presidential salary since uh, May 2009, why would he not open his tax affairs for us to have a look at? Because then he simply gets a salary and they deduct taxes, and it's as easy as this. I, I discussed the possibility with our attorney the other day that maybe what we need is an application to the Constitutional Court to say that the tax affairs of the President and certain, but for example, um, um, cabinet members, for the, for, for the periods that they serve as cabinet ministers, their tax affairs should be public knowledge. We have a right to know whether our politicians are, 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 are have paid their taxes. I think it's as simple as that. I mean, Tom Oyani and Jacob Zuma will forever hide behind the Tax Administration Act. Um, it's the most convenient thing. You know, I remember when I was a journalist, um, I revealed the tax affairs of Radu Van Kretscher and Julius Malema and Lolly Jackson and whatever. Nothing, nothing happened to me. Now suddenly he wants to take me to court. And I'm not the first one to do it. And I won't be the last one to do it. So, if Moyani wants to take me to court, he will also have to explain why SARS have revealed confidential taxpayers' information. Stop hiding behind le legislation to hide a crime. It's not going to work. In your book, you suggest that the 2019 elections may be rigged. So the vote won't help either. It is. You know, I think... I think forget about 2019, we're talking about the ANC elective conference coming up. You know, there's, there's evidence, and I didn't have enough time to get into that as well. There's evidence at the moment of, what can you call them, phantom units that sort of straddles between the hawks and crime intelligence that are roaming around and they only report to very specific senior commanders. And now we talk, and if you think about the break-ins, for example, we had, the break-ins into the office of the... This is when the lights went off in Hyde yeah, Park last night. <laughs> break-ins yes, into the office of the, of the Chief Justice, of the NPA, assassinations in northern KwaZulu-Natal, or in KwaZulu-Natal. And there's, there's evidence that the elements in crime intelligence and elements in the Hawks are out of control. In fact, it was said by Fakili Mbalula just after he became police minister. So there's money to rig elections. 
there's money to influence the, the, the vote at the ANC elective conference. Arthur Fraser has accused you of trying to influence the ANC elective conference in December through your book. How do you respond to that? I tried to expose Arthur Fraser. I didn't try to influence the elective conference of the, of the ANC in December, but in the event that I heard the campaign of Nkosazana Tavini Zuma, I'm a very happy man. How do you feel as a journalist in the book you almost suggest that a Cyril presidency would be better for South Africa and that Jacob Zuma can possibly be arrested well, if Cyril become pre it's becomes president. It's because I've, I've looked at who Nkosazana Zuma, Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma surrounded herself with. Um, and I'm not just talking about people like Ace Magashule and David Mabuza, Mabuza and people like that. I'm talking about the evidence that I found that she has a relationship with somebody like Adriano Mazzotti, who's a cigarette manufacturer, and I have an affidavit from Mazzotti in which he admits that he says, yes, I'm a smuggler, I'm a fraudster, I'm a money launderer, I've bribed SARS officials, I've attempted to bribe SARS officials. Um, this is a man who has a relationship with Lemini Zuma. And this is like the new Guptas we're talking about. I mean, somebody like Adriano Mazzotti, who, by the way, got a tax bill of 600 million rand, even his company. That he hasn't paid. That he, yes, absolutely. Why would he? Because Moyani is in charge. But anyway, um, this man, for example, has just bought himself a mine in the Limpopo province. He's setting himself up to be, become a mining magnet. And on the website of his, of his, the, the website of his company, of his mine, he says he is a great supporter of radical economic transformation. But this is a man who, who, who owes SARS 600 million rand and smuggles and don't declare his taxes and whatever. And then also he's a great proponent of mining minister Zwani's mining charter. So he's setting himself up for the, for the future. He's backing Lamini Zuma, who might win, and Adriano Mazzotti is beginning to become a very rich man under her administration. You actually suggest, because Mazzotti is linked to um, Julius Malema as well, so you suggest in the book that he could be kingmaker, he could be bringing Julius Malema and Nkosazana Lamini Zuma together. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you look at if you look at Lamini Zuma, and, and if you look, if you look at her policies and you look at the policies of the EFF, there's not that that much difference. And Mazzotti is in a perfect position to bring the two together. Um, Mazzotti, you know, when I phoned Malema just before the Sunday Times published the book or launched the book, I phoned Julius Malema and he said, "Yes, Mazzotti is my brother." I said to him, Julius, have you ever seen that affidavit that your brother is a crook? And he said, no, he doesn't know about the affidavit. He doesn't know about it. The same with Lamini Zuma. She might, she might, she might not know that Mazzotti um, is a gangster, but that's no excuse of her, for her to, uh, to mingle with somebody like Mazzotti. He's a cigarette manufacturer. And when Lamini Zuma was the Minister of Health, she championed anti-tobacco legislation. So it's a very, it's a very weird relationship. Well, I, th I think the book provides, provides evidence that we are becoming a gangster state. And I think it is so scary if you put everything together and if you present the evidence to think, to see how far we've slipped down the path of honest government, respectability. Um, it is incredible that we had, and you know, I tried in the book not to, not to deal with the Guptas, for example. because but you some, couldn't avoid it. No, I couldn't avoid it. Every, every now and then their, their names came up, came up again. Um, and it is incredible, and I, think, and I think all South Africans, and I also think lots of people in the ANC are sitting back today and they think, how could this have happened? And I think 
To a certain extent, my book provides an answer. It's happened because Jacob Zuma has destroyed the law enforcement agencies.